you can put this on television in Peru, in Lima? Professor Paul Kurtz, what is philosophy? Uh, is it use, useful now? Well, I think philosophy does have practical applications. Mm -hmm. There are many philosophers who have argued in the past that philosophy is pure speculation or that it was concerned with analysis or criticism. But I think that philosophy has practical consequences. William James said, philosophy bakes no bread. But I don't agree with that. I think you need a philosophical outlook, and it has consequences. And so philosophy is eminently practi practical. Yes? So uh, do the philosophers have a, excuse me, uh, does, the philo does philosophy uh, have a neutral point of view about uh, the, the social problems? You know, there have been many different philosophers, and one of the central questions is, what is philosophy? I have argued that philosophy can be applied, that it is practical, that it has ethical, social, and political consequences. Uh, and that uh, it's important in any one period in history that we clarify our philosophical assumptions and that we provide some kind of rational guidance for life. I use the term eupraxophy, good practical wisdom, but, but going back to Aristotle, philosophy involved practical wisdom, surely in the ethical, political domain, and I would say both for the individual and society. Does God exist and why? The question is, does God exist? I can find insufficient evidence for the claim that God exists. And I spent my entire life at the university arguing the case pro and con. What are the arguments? What is the evidence? What are the reasons why people accept belief in God? Uh, and I find defects in, in, in those arguments. Therefore, I'm, an, I'm a, a, a skeptic, I'm a-religious, uh, I doubt very much the existence of God, I'm willing to look, but uh, the, the case is insubstantial and inconclusive. Therefore, I'm willing to say, no, it's unlikely that God exists. Of course, the basic question is, what do you mean by God? And there have been so many different definitions of God, but if you take the traditional notion of God, the monotheistic notion is God is a person who exists, who created, created the universe and is responsible for everything within it. I think that's a pure myth. It's the grand illusion. And I think mankind, humankind, has reached the point where we can transcend this mythology of the infancy of the race. We ought to learn to live on our own terms. Uh, if God is dead, as Nietzsche said, then humans are alive. And what does that mean? It means we ought to build a good life here and now and do whatever we can as individuals to be happy and contribute as far as we can to the social good. Must philosophers criticize the paranormal claims and why? Well, you know, uh, I've helped to found the Committee for the Scientific Investigation of Claims of the Paranormal uh, some 25 years ago. And we've crystallized the point of view. The paranormal refers to that which is over and beyond normal scientific or ordinary explanations. And people who believe in the paranormal think that things go bump in the night, that they're hidden mysteries. Uh, well, that is a leap of faith. We ask first, what do you mean by a paranormal claim? And second, what's the evidence for it? I think philosophy has an important role to play in examining the case for the paranormal. For example, is there such a thing as ESP? Uh, can psychics predict the future? Are horoscopes true or false? Are we being visited by UFOs now? Are they kidnapping people? Okay, those are very popular beliefs today, and I think philosophical critics working with scientists, 
can examine these claims, and this is why we've become skeptical, because most of them are purely exaggerated, based upon hearsay, and are leaps of faith. Do you believe in afterlife? Do I believe in the afterlife? Uh, believe in? No. I mean, I think uh, many people have a hunger for life after life, and there is the will to exist beyond, particularly when we lose our loved ones, our cherished uh, friends and children, relatives or parents, or when we face our own death, the great existential problem. But uh, this is an illusion. Uh, scientists for over 150 years at least have been questioning the claims that there are souls who uh, leave the body and haunt or hover after we die, but I can find no evidence for that claim. The, the mind, psychological functions, are a function of the physio physiological body, and when the body dies, then the so-called soul disappears. So there's no evidence to support the claim that you can live after you die. What is humanism? Um, how many kinds of it exist? The term humanism uh, means all things to all men and women, and there have been many definitions. I mean, who wants to be anti-human? I mean, who's going to oppose humanism? But what do I mean by humanism? Well, I think humanism, in contrast with these theological dogmas or absolutist theories, humanism wants to realize and fulfill the best of which human beings are capable. Humanism emphasizes the value and dignity of each individual. Humanism is interested in, in realizing our highest potentialities and enabling us to achieve happiness here and now. And that's an important statement to make because there are so many people who have lost confidence in the ability of humans to solve our problems and they look outside for salvation, for God or gods. We say as humanists, each individual has a responsibility for his own destiny or her own destiny. And we are responsible in some sense for the destiny of the human species on this planet. Therefore humanism wants to use reason, science, the best tools that we have for solving human problems. Humanism is an optimistic, positive, affirmative philosophy of the good life. Why, uh, why do you think the uh, human race fall easily to irrationalism? Yes, this great problem of irrationality. Why are so many humans prone to superstition? Why are they gullible? Why are they willing to accept any uh, false illusions, myths, so easily? Well, in the first case, I think the human species has made an enormous advance. I mean, after all, philosophy is only 2,500 years old, going back to the ancient Greeks or to Confucianism in China. Science is only four centuries old. And if you look at the whole evolution of the human species, millions and millions of years, we've made great progress. I like to take the long view. I think there is a steady progression from superstition, ignorance, fear, to the gradual ascent of reason and rationality in human life. And I think there's been tremendous progress, particularly in the last century or two. If you go back a hundred years, 150 years, most people were not educated. Today, education is universal, or at least we recognize that every child should have the opportunity to be educated and, and emancipated. Okay, so it's a slow process, but I think that with education we can liberate the human mind from false hopes and vain illusions, from superstition and dogma. 
Of course, it's a long and arduous task, and for every every step forward, there is retreat. But in the long range, it seems to me that humanism, which places great confidence in the ability of humans to solve problems, is making enormous progress and contributing towards enlightenment. That's the key term, enlightenment. But there is, it's a difficult task, as uh, Francis Bacon, the great English philosopher, said, there are the various idols that people worship, and uh, they leap in without sufficient evidence. The best therapy for nonsense is common sense. The best antidote for superstition is critical reason. And I think that the ordinary person is capable of that. So I'm an optimist. He who wears a shoe best knows where it pinches. That's why I'm a Democrat. Yes, we have to educate, enlighten, develop the capacity for critical thinking. And I think that is, that is uh, the main way to overcome the irrational fears, hopes, false illusions, and superstitions of the past. So, is it possible religion will perish someday? Possible that what? The reli religions Reli we will religion sense. perish? <laughs> yeah, yes. I think religions are bound to change. I mean, the great religions of Isis and Osiris of the Egyptians gave way. The Homeric myths of Zeus and Apollo and the great gods gave way. And uh, I think Christianity, Islam, Judaism, all the ancient religions of the past in time will evolve and change, yes and new forms will emerge. And one can't predict what they will be. Uh, so uh, I think we need the constant application of reason and criticism to reconstruct religion and uh, modify dogma. I think our task is to liberalize these fanatic fundamentalists that want to suppress everybody. I think that we have a task to do that. Like Socrates, we are the gadflies pricking away at these beliefs, and that's a vital and valuable role. Will religion disappear? Well, I don't know. I'm not a prophet. I'm a philosopher, not a prophet. I think religions will be transformed, and I think that they could be liberalized and humanized, but I think our task is to try, try to develop an alternative. Now there are millions and millions of people on this planet who live without religion and lead a good life. They're good citizens, they're loving parents, they contribute to society, they lead the good life. Many of these are the great heroes in human history. And you can think of the philosophers such as Aristotle and Epicurus and Democritus and Hypatia and uh, uh, Spinoza, and Immanuel Kant, and uh, Bertrand Russell, and John Dewey, and many of them are the great scientists, such as Darwin and Einstein, and the great writers, such as Shakespeare, and the great poets, such as Shelley, and the great musicians, such as Beethoven. So I think the heroes of the human race, in one sense, have transcended the ancient dogmas of the past and are building a new humanism. So I think that humanism provides a eupraxophy, an alternative to the ancient religions. The great challenge today, as we enter the 21st century and beyond, is to build an alternative to these ancient, dogmatic, often fundamentalist, absolutist belief systems based upon tolerance and reason. And that's a great challenge. And I think humanism has a great role to play in liberating mankind from these ancient fears and beliefs. Thank you very much. Okay. That's sufficient. <laughs>